Welcome! In this video and the example video that follows, we'll give you a brief introduction or a, a quick review rather of uh, real integrals. This will be in preparation for our, our work in coming weeks with uh, complex integrals, integrals of complex functions. To start off with, let's remind you of what you saw of integrals in the, uh, in the first semester of, of calculus. Um, the definite integral of a function f of x over the interval from a to b is defined as a limit of a, a sum. Now we call these Riemann sums in first semester calculus. And the idea is, is pretty simple. We're going to take the interval from a to b and we're going to split it up into a bunch of subintervals. Now each of these subintervals is going to uh, create a, a rectangle of sorts. Inside uh, a subinterval we're going to pick a particular point x star, and that particular point tells us where on the function to look in determining the height of the rectangle. Now the height is the function value at x star. We multiply by the width, um, which we denote by delta x sub k for the kth subinterval, and that gives us the area of that rectangle, the signed area, where the, uh, the signed area will be negative if the function value is negative. Now adding these all up gives us an approximation for the definite integral on this, uh, on this region. And to get the exact value, or what we define to be the exact value, we take the limit as this partition gets finer. In other words, the limit as the length of the largest subinterval gets smaller and smaller. Now in practice we, we often considered subintervals that had the same width and then we uh, made sure that the width of those uh, rectangles went to zero by, by using more and more of them. And uh, you saw that the more uh, rectangles you use, the better a fit you got, and uh, the definite integral was defined to be the limiting value, what these uh, Riemann sums approach as the width of the rectangles goes to zero. Right, now, if we take a look at a particular example, a uh, problem you probably had at some point in your first semester calculus was to evaluate the integral of x squared on an interval. Here we'll go from 0 to 2. Uh, and you were probably told to use a right-hand sum or a left-hand sum. Now once you make that decision, that makes it a little, little bit easier. We can come up with a formula for the, uh, the right-hand endpoints, and we can come up with a formula for the width of the rectangle if we make, sh make certain assumptions, like that the rectangles all have the same width and so on. So we have here an example of what happens if you take a, uh, the definite integral uh, using right-hand sums. And here we're just going to let the number of those rectangles in the sum approach infinity. Now simplifying f of xk star and, and delta xk, we can simplify the sum, uh, pull out some things that are constant with respect to the sum. We end up with a, a summation with a nice form. We have a formula for this one. You may or may not remember it, but the sum of k squared from k equals 1 to k equals n equals this expression here. And then as we let n approach infinity, this expression has a limiting value of 8 thirds. Now when you saw this in first semester calculus, it was probably just to give you some practice in the concepts of Riemann sums. But this process is not exactly what you did every time you took a definite integral. Rather, you learned about the fundamental theorem of calculus which was very handy in evaluating uh, certain definite integrals. All you had to do was take the antiderivative of what's inside, evaluated it at the endpoints, b and a, and subtract them, and that gave you an exact value. And this is uh, how most of us would find the value of the integral of x squared from 0 to 2. Now, this is not the definition of the definite integral. The definite integral is defined as this limit of Riemann sums but it, it certainly allows us to compute definite integrals very quickly. Now that's the case uh, for a lot of integrals we'll see in, in the future, like this one in, in the on the left. However, there are some integrals you saw in first semester calculus probably, and you'll see in our class, that can't very easily be computed using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Here's an example. If we wanted to evaluate this definite integral, we'll be stuck at finding the antiderivative of e to the minus x squared, we, we can't really write down a nice antiderivative for that function. However, if we wanted to approximate the value of this definite integral, we could go back to our definition and uh, approximate it using Riemann sums that uh, uh, had a partition size getting smaller and smaller. All right now moving along to third semester calculus, multivariable calculus, we talked about path integrals or line integrals. Now the idea was you, you had a function that depended on two variables, x and y. 
and uh, you wanted to compute the value of a particular function along a path. So instead of just going from x equals a to x equals b, what we wanted to do instead is move from one point in the xy plane to another point. Now to uh, illustrate that movement, you'll usually parameterize your path c. Uh, we'll think of c broken up into uh, functions x and y, each of a third parameter variable. And the definition of the integral was then the, f the value of the function at certain points along the path times a, a width, which is a small change either in your arc length or um, in a small change in x or a small change in y. Now, these are the definitions of the definite integrals. In, uh, in practice, you, you had some shortcuts, um, like we had in the real case, and we'll, we'll see those in a second. Now, as we talk about curves in the, uh, the plane now, and when we talk about curves in the complex plane in uh, coming weeks, we're going to need to classify curves by their characteristics. So we'll talk a bit about uh, what kind of curves there are. So if we had a curve C, and it was parameterized, so x and y were both written in terms of a variable t, which was allowed to range from a to b. A curve is going to be smooth if it's first a partial derivative, sorry, if it's a x and y, their derivatives with respect to t, are continuous everywhere on the interval, and they're not both zero at any point inside the interior of the interval. Now what this definition means is that you can trace over that curve smoothly without any sudden stops or jerks of, of your pencil. Now if you can't do that, you can still have what's called a piecewise smooth curve if your curve is made up of a finite sequence of smooth curves that are joined, you know, the end of one to the beginning of the other. So while this um, curve is a smooth curve and this one is not, that corner there and that corner there means that both x prime and y prime were simultaneously zero at some, some point in the inside. We can think of this curve as taking a smooth curve here, joining it to a smooth curve there, followed by another smooth curve that moves in this direction, and we have a piecewise smooth curve. Now a simple curve is simply a curve that does not uh, cross itself, except perhaps at the, at the beginning point that might equal the end point. So this curve is a simple curve, so is this, and this curve is a simple curve if we in interpret this curve as being traced out once with the starting and the ending point being the same point. Now the uh, last curve is not a simple curve because you arrive at the same point two different times along the, uh, the, the path uh, you follow. Now a curve will be called a closed curve if the beginning point and the end point are the same point. So again, thinking of this as a curve that's traced out exactly once, the beginning and the ending point are the same, it's closed, and this curve would also be closed. All right, now to review some examples that you probably saw in, uh, in third semester calculus, uh, let's say that you wanted to evaluate these two definite integrals over the certain region. We're going to actually go through the solutions of these problems in the next video, but you'll recall that to solve these, you basically want to follow a few uh, steps that are the same in all of these. You want to start by parameterizing your curve. You want to replace the x, the y, and either the dx or the dy or the ds with parameterized versions of these variables in terms of your parameter. You'll then evaluate the integral and uh, compute your answer. All right, we'll take a look at these particular problems in the next video. See you then.